Hey guys, welcome to Planning with Crystal. So today's video is all about the Nespresso Barista Milk Machine. So I'm going to go into a lot of detail like I do with a lot of my other videos. I'm going to start off by telling you about the machine itself and a few little bits of information I've picked up from using it for quite a while now. I'm also going to make a range of drinks. I've got all the cups and capsules and things all lined up there so that we can make them together and I can kind of show you how I use this machine and give you my thoughts on it. So this machine retails at £179. It is the most expensive milk machine that Nespresso make. It's a lot of money. So I really think it's something that people will be interested in finding out about before deciding whether to kind of shell out all this money on it. So essentially you have got this metal jug and this is where all your recipes are prepared. This base unit is plugged in and this is the kind of electronic device that's actually doing the heating and things. You also have a whisk and the whisk has different levels on it. So each recipe will tell you how much milk to put in, although of course you can adapt this as you get used to it and find out what works for you. But the measurements here, the minimum line is 100 mils. The other line here is 160 mils and the maximum line is 250 mils. So that's the maximum amount of liquid milk, whatever you want to put in it, that the machine can handle. This magnetizes in the jug. When it's in the machine, it's completely magnetized there. One big flaw I find when using this machine and one that I hope they'll kind of adjust in a future version of it is that when you actually take the jug out of the device to pour that whisk is no longer magnetic and just falls out so when you pour in you have to put your finger on top and pour like that which i think in a machine of this amount of money is a little bit of an oversight the lid you have to put a lid on for all recipes or it will just splatter everywhere I say that because I've got the Hotel Chocolat Velvetizer, that copes fine without the lid on, but the power of this whisk, it will just splatter everywhere if you don't put the lid on. In terms of cleaning this machine, one advantage is the metal jug, the whisk, and the lid, and it also has um, a rubberized seal that you can pull out for cleaning, is all dishwasher safe. So if you do want to use the dishwasher to clean your machine, then you can do it. Obviously, you can't put this base unit in there, um, but it is something to think about because not all of their machines are dishwasher proof. And if you watch the other videos I've done on some of the other milk machines, you'll see which ones are and which ones aren't. I also plan to do comparison videos between the milk frothers, so then you can kind of decide which one's for you. So stick around on the channel if that's something that interests you. So. What we're going to do, like I said, I'm going to talk you through it. So what you need, well, you don't have to have, but one thing that's worth having if you've got this device is um, a mobile phone or a device with the Nespresso app on. So when you're on the Nespresso app, you just click the little machine button at the top. You connect your barista by following all the steps on here. So mine's already connected. You can see it says my barista barista is ready. And one advantage of using the mobile phone is it allows you to select different recipes that you want to add to your device. So the device itself can only hold so many recipes. I believe it's 13. So these are the current recipes I've got on my phone. And if I wanted to add a different recipe, I could just click the minus and it removes it from the device go to discover and add something else by clicking on the recipe and clicking that plus button recipe added to your barista and then when you go to on my barista you'll see that recipe is there but actually I'm going to put the hot chocolate back on because actually I'm going to be making that one with you as one of the recipes we're going to prepare together today so just click that recipe added to your barista. So when you first get the machine, it is preloaded with a series of recipes. So if you don't have a separate device, you can just use the machine as it is. But if you want the option of being able to swap and use all the recipes, then you really do need to have another device um, that's capable of running an app, like I said, like a phone or a tablet or something similar. So to switch on the machine, you simply 
press this button and it will say hello. It's a very friendly machine. And then you use these arrows to go through and select whichever recipe you're going to make. And if it's quite a long word, it will just move across like that so that you can see the whole title. You can't click on the phone to get the machine to start working, which surprised me. I kind of thought when I bought the machine that that was going to be a feature, that I'd be able to just click the phone and it'd start the machine working, but that's not a feature. So it is all about using this once you've launched whichever recipe you want um, and whenever you've added whichever recipes you want from your phone. So to start with, we're going to prepare together an iced nitro. I'm just going to get up the recipe on my phone. You don't need to do this, but one advantage, it does actually have the whole recipe. It tells you exactly what ingredients you need and how to prepare the recipe. And it also has a selection of coffees at the bottom that they recommend as working best with this recipe. Of course, you can use whichever coffee you want, but for today, I'm going to be using recommended coffees and coffees I've used that I think work well with it. Now that I have selected iced nitro to get the steps up on my phone, you will see the machine has thought, ah, oh, she's looking at an iced nitro and it has brought it up on there. So it is a little bit in tune. It can tell that's what I'm going to be making and therefore it's launched that recipe. But otherwise you could just use the arrows and select a different recipe if you weren't going to make this one. Okay, so step one. First, add three ice cubes into the jug. So these particular ice cubes actually come from an ice cube tray I got from Nespresso when they were offering ice cube trays in the summer. But you can, of course, use any ice you want. It does say 90 grams or 3.17 ounces. One other thing to note, all of the recipes I'll be preparing today, I'll be using the original line machine for. I can do a separate video to show you how I use this with my virtual machine, but the machine itself and all the directions on the phone actually pertain to you using an original line machine. Okay, next it tells me to brew my espresso coffee with the coffee machine and pour it on top of the ice. So here's my original line machine. This is the cup I'm going to be using for this particular recipe. And the coffee I'm going to be using is Isperazone Palmero, which is one that's recommended um, for this recipe. So I'm just going to pop that in. I'm going to select Espresso. If you're interested in this particular machine, it's the Creatista Pro. I did a whole video comparing it to another machine and showing you how to use it. So check out that video if you're interested in this machine. Um, but for now, I'm just going to use it to brew the coffee. Okay, so we've got our 40 mils of coffee there. So it says to pour the coffee on top of the ice and that will obviously help to kind of melt it to start with. You can see the machine's actually shut itself off because it's taken me a minute or so to dispense the coffee and stuff. So if I just click it, it should bring up the last recipe we were looking at, um, the ice nitro, which it has. Okay, so it also says you can add sugar at this point if you want to, but you don't have to, so I'm not going to. And then it says add cold water up to the maximum level marking. So we will do that now. Okay, I've just moved the ice around a little bit because it was sort of sticking together just so I can make sure we're not going over the maximum line. So you can see I've taken that all the way up to the maximum line there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to close the lid and press the start button on the device. Always make sure that this bit that sort of sticks out on your lid lines up well with that jug handle. Otherwise, you will likely find it'll start to leak. So that's quite important. So you just simply press the button. So this particular recipe makes quite a lot of noise. As you can imagine, it's got the ice in there. So it's doing a lot of kind of spinning around to take that into account. As the recipe is preparing, you do get this funky wiggly line, completely unnecessary, but you can tell it's working. And here's a little shot of it sort of mixing up together in there. Now this is it really mixing and going for it. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna take the lid off. You can see that throth is all the way up to there. So I'm gonna grab the glass, which is just the one that I prepared the coffee in. So it's basically blended that coffee and ice together. So I'm gonna pour it out for you now, making sure I'm pressing on holding that top bit so it's not going everywhere. There's actually a little bit left in here with the ice, but that's kind of what it looks like. I'm going to give it a quick stir actually because I've left the residue of the coffee. It doesn't look quite as pretty, does it? So this is what the coffee looks like. It was one I was drinking quite a lot in the summertime, back when we had nice warm weather. Um, the ice cubes aren't completely melted. I'd obviously put a little straw in there to drink it. In fact, the ice cubes have actually remained in here because my glass isn't quite big enough. So I'm just going to pop them in there. Okay, so it's quite full. I'm just going to test the temperature here for you in case you're curious as to how cold it is. Because obviously we have put hot coffee in. Yes, it's blended it, but it still was hot to start with. Okay, so we're sitting at around about 3.9 degrees on this one. So now we're going to make a cortado. And as you can see, oh, the machine already knows what I'm going to make. So for this one, we are going to start off by brewing our coffee, which is an espresso and pour it into a cup. So there's lots of different coffee suggestions for this one, but I'm using cocoa truffle, which has got a lovely kind of chocolatey taste. And we're doing espresso sized coffee at this point. So then it tells us to leave the coffee in the cup, which I'm going to do. And then we are just pouring the minimum amount of milk, which is 100 mils or 1.38 fluid ounces. And this is going to be up to the minimum level marking. And then it's just a case of closing the lid, pressing the button on the front there. You can see it's just mixing up there. But a cortado is essentially a kind of coffee drink that's made with not that much milk. So it's actually a Spanish recipe. It just contains two ingredients, espresso and milk foam. It says, let the morning softness get to you, ole. And it says it takes a minute to prepare. So not too long on this one on the machine. Okay, so it's done. So we take off the lid. Steam's rising there from the top. One slightly frustrating thing about this sort of recipe is we've had to do the minimum amount of milk, which is actually more than you really need. And this particular recipe is all about the milk foam. So you actually end up having to use a spoon to kind of spoon on that foam. Now it talks about not using a metal spoon in here because it can damage the jug, but they don't actually provide you with a barista spoon anymore. So it's that or nothing, isn't it really? So I'm gonna pour a little bit of the milk in actually. And then we'll top it off with that foam on top. But it isn't sort of super foamy as it's pictured in the kind of recipe. But it kind of looks something like that. And it is a tasty little drink. Okay, so now we're actually going to be looking at hot chocolate. So this particular recipe calls for you to use some of their chocolate squares, which I'm going to do to prepare the recipe as I've suggested. Now, it does say to use three chocolate squares. These are the dark chocolate ones, but I'm actually going to use four because I think it's just a little bit better. These are the individually wrapped ones from Nespresso. You can actually use whatever chocolate you want. You don't even have to grate it because this machine does the work for you. And if you want some kind of hot chocolate recipe suggestions, I did a series of videos for my Hotel Chocolat Velvetizer, which is a hot chocolate machine. This machine can actually do it a lot better because it can actually melt the chocolate from bigger size pieces. So you can totally use those recipes in this machine. I will link them at the end if you are interested in hot chocolate recipes. But back to this one. 
So this is gonna make us just a little hot chocolate. It's not gonna be a big mug. You'd have to kind of double the recipe size to make it into a big one. Um, but it tells us to put 100 mils of milk in this recipe. So we're gonna start off by putting the 100 milliliters of milk up to that minimum line. And then you put your chocolate squares directly into the jug. So we unwrap them, pop them in. And then it tells us to close the lid, press that start button. So this particular recipe actually takes three minutes. I guess because it's actually got to melt the chocolate, heat the chocolate, blend it with the milk. So I'll speed this one up for you. So it says done. So you can actually use a cappuccino Nespresso glass for this or whatever you want, cup, what have you. But it isn't a large hot chocolate like I said. It is very nicely blended though and very, very tasty I might add. So this is dark chocolate but they do all kinds of different chocolate squares you can make or you can completely make it out of your favourite chocolate bars whatever you like and if you'd like me to do sort of specific recipes and stuff in here and test different things leave me some comments let me know okay so we are getting a reading of 64.2 on this one so here's our little finished hot chocolate but like i said you would need a lot more for a full sized cup this is only making just over 100 mils okay so now we're going to be looking at the mocha So for this one, it tells us to, first of all, oh, it switched itself off because I've left it for a minute. You just click it and it comes back on. So now it's telling us to insert four chocolate squares into the jug. Then it tells us to pour 100 mils of milk into the jug up to the minimum level marking. I think I went a tiny bit over there. <laughs> it's kind of hard trying to hold the camera and um, the milk and everything at the same time. But anyway, it's in there. Then it tells us to brew our espresso coffee with the coffee machine and pour it into the jug. So for this recipe, I'm going to be using um, Ristresso, which is one of the recommended coffees. And then we're going to pour on top our coffee. And then it's put the lid on and press the button. So again, this one is a three minute recipe as it is blending the chocolate, melting it, mixing it with the milk and the coffee. So I'll speed this bit up for you. Okay, done. Incidentally, this machine's now making a little bit of noise, I think, because we've made, this is our fourth recipe in quick succession. But here is that delicious mocha, so the mix of the chocolate and the coffee. So that is 60.9 degrees. And that's the mocha. Okay, so we're gonna make a cappuccino now. So for this recipe, it first of all tells us to brew our espresso coffee. So I'm going to be using Corto because I think this works really well in a cappuccino. Certainly this is how I like it. So we're brewing an espresso sized coffee.
and then it tells us to pour that coffee into the jug so we'll do that then it tells us to pour cold milk up to the minimum level marking now i'm actually going to be using soya milk for this recipe because i think it's important for people to see whether you can use kind of plant-based milks and things in here because that might be a consideration for you so we're going to use soy milk to prepare this one so we're just taking it up to that minimum level line and then it's just a case of closing that lid again pressing the button for the recipe to start And this one takes two minutes. Okay, so we're done. So we're going to pour our cappuccino in here. And then all the foam is actually still in this guy. So you can kind of try to throw it all out on top that way. If we take the whisk out and try and get it that way or kind of get it with a spoon, but it does mean sort of scraping around with a metal spoon, which isn't really ideal. But that's our little cappuccino made with soy milk so this one isn't super hot it's just given us a reading of around about 50.5 okay and then finally we're gonna do a latte macchiato so this is the one it's an austrian preparation and it's where you're actually putting the milk in first the milk's mostly steamed on and foamed and then you put the coffee on top and it just sort of gives you that nice effect so to start with we put 150 mils it says up to the intermediate level marking i actually think it's more like 160 from when i've measured it with a jug but there we go so we're going to go up to that in intermediate level marking so we've got the milk in there and it just tells us to close that lid press that start button So what we're going to do is the milk is going to froth itself and then we're going to put the milk into the cup and then put the cup underneath the spout the coffee is going to be dispensed from and then we're just literally going to see the coffee sort of drop through that milk. Okay, so milk is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour our milk into the mug. Okay, so what it tells us to do now is brew the coffee and then pour it into the cup but actually i just tend to put the mug here get my coffee which for this one we are using Esperazon genova and then we're just literally putting the coffee in and dispensing it right into the milk espresso size serving So you see how you do get the nice layers of the milk, the coffee and the milk and just that little stain on the top where the coffee has dropped in. And that's the effect you're kind of going for with this coffee. It's very aesthetically pleasing, I think. And of course you ruin the effect by stirring it and putting sugar in or however you drink your coffee. Okay, so I'm getting a reading of around about 50. It did go up and then it's gone down again, but we're going to say around about 50 degrees for this one. And that's what it looks like. So as a little recap, this is what we made today. We made the iced nitro. That was the latte macchiato. We made a hot chocolate, a mocha, a cortado, and 
a cappuccino with soy milk everything else was just made with regular semi-skimmed milk so i do hope you've enjoyed watching this video let me know if you'd like me to do more of these videos where i make lots of different recipes and so you can see how they all turn out i'll also be filming a comparison with nespresso's Arachino 3 milk machine so if you do want to see that make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell to be notified when that video goes live i've also done lots of other nespresso videos going through comparisons with machines and making the coffees and unboxings and all that kind of stuff so make sure you check out my nespresso playlist and like i said i will also link my hot chocolate recipes playlist as well at the end so thank you so much for watching i would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up it lets me know you're enjoying the content i'm producing i'd love it if you'd subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified when my next video goes live bye guys